Welcome to the Connect with BMC Helix ITSM and Remedy webinar. During today's webinar, you are able to ask questions of our panelists. The presentation and any Q&A will be published to our YouTube channel within a week of today's broadcast. Today we are talking about managing flash deprecation and replacement features within Remedy. I'll turn it over to Juliet to start us on this content. Thank you, Greg, and welcome to the BMC Managing Flash Deprecation and Replacement Features webinar. During today's session, we will be covering the requirements to replace the Adobe Flash functionality, what BMC has done to replace the Flash capabilities, and provide our customers with upgrade options and best practice advice in order to make use of the Flash replacement features. Adobe announced that they have ended development and will cease support and distribution of Flash Player by the end of this year. BMC has been taking proactive steps to manage the retirement of the Adobe Flash Player, has been making changes to remove the Flash components since version 9104. The Remedy product areas which have previously made use of the Flash Player are the new CMDB console introduced in 9104, the SRM process designer and visualizer, approval process visualizer, flashboards, and the HM Explorer integrations within mid-tier. The final Flash capability replacements to address the Adobe Flash removal will be provided in a platform-only 2002 Patch 1 release or the cloud release of 2008. To ensure our customers make full use of product functionality that has previously used Flash, BMC's recommendation is for you to upgrade the platform only to 2002 and then apply Patch 1, which was released in August this year. Although Adobe will stop using Flash at the end of the year, we want to be able to provide our customers with the time to plan their upgrade and avoid any potential loss of functionality as a result of Flash being removed. To help you plan your upgrade, the team today will walk you through the upgrade requirements and explain the changes in the product components impacted by the new Flash replacement features in version 2002 patch 1, plus address any other questions or concerns you might have. So I'd like to hand over to Varbav next, who will be talking to you about the personas affected by the flash replacements. Thank you, Juliet. So as we all know, that browser stopped rendering the flash component uh, to be rendered from the browsers. So as Remedy uses uh, some of the flash component to render uh, the contents, here we're going to talk about the personas uh, that is being affected uh, with this particular flash deprecation. The first persona in this uh, table you can see is AR administrator who is actually creating the flashboard graphs or charts for monitoring. The second persona that is affected is asset administrator. Asset administrator job is to view the CI, explore the CI details for relationships or performing the advice CI searches. The third persona uh, that has been affected is change coordinator or a change manager who reviews the impact of the change request by performing a trim impact simulation. The fourth persona that has been affected by this is CMDB administrator. As part of the flash deprecation, we have started to build a new CMDB interface uh, that has been available from 9104 and most of its capabilities available in 2002 patch one. So the CMDB administrator, uh, the main job for him is to create and manage the jobs like normalization, reconciliation, creating custom classes, etc. The next persona is the approver who approving the change request or approval request. So as part of the approver, uh, if there are multiple levels of approver and the approver has to see who the previous approver who approved my the particular change or a request he has to review the diagram for the approval flow. So that has been affected uh, as part of this flash deprecation. The other persona that has been affected mainly is the SRM administrator who actually create the SRDs and uh, with creation of SRDs, you need to create the business logic with process definition template. So that process definition template currently using a flash base, uh, flash base content so with this persona being affected, actually that has been addressed in 2002 patch one. The last persona that has been affected is the end user, uh, which who has a right of SRM user and who's accessing the request and looking after what is my request lifecycle. 
at what part uh, the request is in the flow. So the process view, that's the component that has been affected as part of this uh, flash deprecation. We'll move to the next slide and try to see uh, what needs to be done in order to uh, get this uh, flash deprecation problem addressed in our 2002 patch one. So BMC recommends uh, upgrading the components. Uh, the components are mid-tier AR, CMDB, and AI. These components must be upgraded to 2002 patch one in order to get the complete feature set of flash deprecations. In addition to these four mandatory components, if you are coming from an older version, uh, there may be additional components that may also warrant an upgrade. Uh, in this example, we can see that if you are using any version of Remedy RSSO that is prior to 1908 version. Uh, so if you are upgrading your AR and CMDB platform to 2002 patch one, you may need to upgrade your RSSO version as well. The second part in this case is digital workplace. So if you are coming from any version prior to 1805, uh, we used to leverage a plugin called Social Event Manager plugin, which used to take the data from your AR system and posting that data to the Mongo database. So when you upgrade your AR platform and CMDB platform to 2002 patch one, that Social Event Manager plugin may not work. And that's the reason that if you are coming from any older version than 1805, you may need to also upgrade your digital workplace version to any version later than 1805 and later. The last component is Smart IT, similar to digital workplace. If you are coming from any version prior to 1805, uh, the transaction between AR to Mongo may not work due to the social event manager plugin may not run. So our advice is to also considering upgrade the Smart IT platform to post-1805 our later version. The current version for digital workplace and smart IT is 2002 as well. And I think with our SaaS release, it will be 2008. Doug will take over uh, for the AR and uh, mid-tier component upgrades. Thank you, Vaibhav. The first area that you need to consider upgrading is the AR system platform, which consists of the AR server and the mid-tier. So the mid-tier is the main presentation component of ITSM, and it contains visualizers for flashboards, SRM, CMDB, approval, and more. And so that needs to be upgraded so you can um, upgrade those visualizers. AR server is required to be upgraded to maintain the dependencies on other components such as CMDB. But if you are only using SRM and you're not using CMDB flash-based UIs or the HM Explorer, you can skip the AR server and only upgrade the mid-tier. But BMC does recommend upgrading to the latest version, patch, and hotfix as a general guideline. So in this presentation, we are recommending that you upgrade both the mid-tier and the AR server. So the upgrade process is fairly simple. You need to upgrade AR server and the mid-tier to 2002 first. And generally, we have recommend upgrading mid-tier first uh, before AR server unless they're co-located on the same box. Then you need to apply the DDP package for patch uh, one for AR server. And this does include a file deployment. So you'll need to make sure you run the file deployment utility. And then you also need to run the DDP package for patch one for the mid tier, which also includes a file deployment. And that's all you need to do to upgrade both the AR server and the mid tier. And now John's gonna cover CMDB. Thanks, Doug. Um, so the impact of flash removal will be significant to the Atrium Core Console. In order to ensure minimal or no impact, the Remedy Core product should be upgraded to 2002 patch one. This means that you'll need to upgrade AR server, mid-tier, CMDB, and Atrium integrator, as all of these are core components designed to work together. If the browser is not updated and continues to support flash, the old Flex Atrium Core Console will still be available to use. However, if the browser is upgraded and then Flash is no longer supported, only the new CMDB UI will be accessible from version 9104 when it was initially released to the current version. All previous versions will not be accessible through the old Atrium Core Console. If Remedy is upgraded, starting with 9104 through 1908, the CMDB UI will only have a limited set of new features available. 
if Remedy Core is upgraded to 2002 patch one, all of the existing old Atrium Core console features will be available in the new CMDB UI. The following table gives information about the cumulative updates made to the CMDB UI with each CMDB release over the past few years from 9.104 and later. Version 9.104 is when the initial CMDB UI was introduced into the product, but with limited functionality for reconciliation and normalization. And then with each subsequent release, additional features would be provided, such as adding in CMDB Explorer, or the KPI, which is the key performance indicators, class manager, or AI, which is Atrium Integrator, or AIS, Atrium Impact Simulator, and so on. Since each release is cumulative, if your current version is not at version 2002, patch one, then the only CMDB UI capabilities you will have is for that release and all previous releases back to 9104. For instance, if you have version 1908, you will have all of the CMDB UI capabilities in the table displayed from 9104 through to 1908. You will not have any of the features in the CMDB UI that are listed for versions 2002 or 2002 patch 1. And now I will do a short demo for CMDB. This example will demonstrate the federated classes and federated plugin configuration. To start, we have to build a plugin to access the federated CIs. This plugin, Banking Server plugin, will access a hypothetical table containing banking server CI data. The plugin fields basically connect to a test database on a remote SQL server and return any table that starts with B, which is the banking server table. After the plugin is created, it'll have a red X here for the loaded. So you'll have to click the refresh button here and then it'll show a green check mark for it being loaded. So after the plugin is loaded, we can then build the federated class and its relationship to a BMC core class. For this example, we'll use the BMC computer system class for the relationship. I've already created the federated class and it appears under the federated base element. And its relationship is under the federated base relationship. As the class is already created, I have a separate tab open to show the examples of a creating a federated class. Notice that the select plugin field points to my custom plugin and the select table field returns the dbo.bankingServers table. I've set the key attribute to be name and selected all fields to be returned from the remote SQL table. This part here. For the relationship section, qualification is set up between the BMC computer system class and the federated class. This example it's the remote table name field equal to the BMC computer system field in BMC core. To create a qualification, the wrench icon opens the qualification builder. So over in quick search, I can check the results by searching for one of the CIs that has a relationship to a federated CI. In the results from Explorer, you can see the relationship to the federated CI. In the federated CI details, you can see the values returned from the remote database record. And here are the fields. In this demonstration, we'll quickly look at the updates to the reconciliation engine, also known as RE. In the activity type dropdown, we have four new activities that are now in the new CMDB UI, which are execute, copy, compare, and delete. The execute activity will allow you to add a sequence to run existing jobs. The copy activity allows you to copy CIs from one data set to another based on a qualification. The compare activity allows you to compare CIs from two data sets to see the differences. And lastly, the delete activity will allow you to delete CIs from a data set. For the copy activity example, I would like to add new products to the product catalog table, also called the PCT. These new products will come from the BMC Discovery dataset. To do this, 
I would first run normalization to check which CIs from Discovery dataset are failing. After reviewing the failed normalization CIs, I can then use a custom field added to the BMC base element class. I name that attribute copy to product catalog to mark the CIs that I want to add to the product catalog table or PCT. After that, I create a qualification rule that I can use for the copy activity. In this case, copy to product catalog will equal copy to product. If that's in the CI, I want that copied to my target data set. So next, I create a copy activity to copy those discovery CIs. For the target data set, a normalization job can then be built to update the PCT. Notice that BMC product is my target data set, and then my qualification is the copy product qualification for the custom attribute. For a compare activity example, I could compare CIs in a qualification to check the normalization status and find out which CIs failed between BMC sample and BMC asset data sets, and this would create a comparison report. I've already run the job, so we'll look at the report here. Okay. For the delete activity example, I have, I have test CIs in csv.local that I can run the delete activity against. In the delete activity, you have delete instances where you can choose to delete identified and unidentified CIs or one or the other. You can also uncheck all classes and instances and choose a qualification from the qualification set, just like you can do with the copy uh, activity. For this demonstration, we'll look at CMDB auditing. After a class is set up for auditing in Class Manager, the changes can be viewed from the quick search results. I have the BMC computer system class set up for the log audit. I'm now going to do a quick search for a CI and check its audit. The changes are noted in the changed attributes column. And now I will turn it over to Naranjan for ITSM. Thank you, John. Hello, everyone. I'm going to discuss the impact of flash removal on the ITSM applications. ITSM applications, primarily asset management and change management, uses Atrium Explorer and Impact Simulator. Most often, while dealing with the CI in asset management, user might like to understand how the assets are related to each other. Atrium Explorer displays a map of the relationship between the selected CI and the related CI. To view the relationship of all levels across the environment, one can transfer the map from one CI to the other. The Explorer CI option could be found at several places within the application. For example, while deleting the CI, user might want to see how the CIs are related to each other. From the Asset Management Console itself, one might like to explore the CI relationship while searching for the CI in the CI search window from the Software Asset Management Console, also known as SAM Console. From the Change Management Application perspective, Atrium Explorer shows configuration items and the relationship to other CIs, thereby enabling the user to improve the accuracy of change planning by locating the CIs. Within the change management application, user, user can explore the CI functions by navigating to functions, time segment, configuration item. Coming to the impact simulator, from the change management application, one can leverage the impact simulator to proactively determine how the change to the availability of a CI affects other CIs and services. Based on the results of impact simulator, user can determine to create new change requests or and relate CI to the existing change request. With the removal of Flash, if the user determined to upgrade the browser, they should also upgrade the platform in order to continue using these capabilities of Explorer and Impact Simulator. Approval Central. Approval Central enables user to quickly review the approval request, awaiting user attention. Within the Approval Central, one might like to use the details of the approval request by clicking on the Approval Details button. You can view the approval process either as a sequence diagram or a table. As you can see in these two diagrams, 
the the sequence diagram table used flash previously which is now currently using html rendering if the user upgrades browser but not the ai components they won't be able to use the flash anymore and they have to be dependent on the table option only to see the approval process over to you jeff to provide more details from the srm side thank you thanks naranjan okay for srm there are two areas that are impact. One of them is going to be kind of the to the end user. The, the other one is going to be for uh, one of the administrators who creates objects in SRM. The visualizer is what's impacted in both these areas. The one on request entry console is going to be on the process view. Everything's going to be clickable the same way it was before. It's just that the view is going to look a little different. And then the other one is going to be the the PDTs. Uh, working with, creating, deleting, editing, whatever needs to be done within a PDT is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to do a demo here to show the differences between the versions after you do the upgrade. So as was mentioned previously, all that's needed is to upgrade the mid-tier to 2002 patch 1 to get the SRM functionality updated. It's recommended, though, to upgrade the entire platform suite as I believe Doug mentioned earlier, today our server mid-tier seemed to be an AI, all to 2002 patch one. Okay, so in this demo, we're gonna look at the two main areas updated with the flash replacement that's coming out in uh, version 2002.01. The first one's just gonna be the process view and request details. It's just gonna look a little different. This is what we've got currently. This is what everybody's gonna be familiar with. We see our flash rendered, process view and if you click on that AOT there we we see that there's a work order that it will open that's the first area second area is going to be in the PDT so this is that same flow that I was just working on in the request details and everybody knows that if you edit this and you right click on a condition I've clicked C7 here and if I delete it we see that it automatically renders everything back into place and makes C6 the next one in the group. And if we delete Z6, the same thing occurs there. So now I'm going to look at the same system that's been upgraded to 2002.01. Okay, so I'm bringing up the process view. And we can see already there's a little difference here. There's a zoom button, which is a nice feature that this, that this item has. We can see that the flow looks like it did before. Now, if we want to zoom in to see some of the items, we can do that. And then we can, well, what we'll do is we'll click on one of the AOIs. This is the one that created a work order, and there's my work order number. This is just as it was with the flash rendered view. And if we click on a condition in the flow, we see that it displays just as it did before on the right-hand side. It shows you the condition and whether it was met or not. Okay, so now let's look at a PDT using the new visualizer. Okay, so this is a PDT for the item that we were just looking at in the process view. You can see the zoom is there, and you can see I've zoomed in a little bit on it. Now, one thing you'll notice is the way you highlight items, it, it gives you an X there to, to, to remove them. And when you highlight a condition, it shows you the branches that are associated with that condition, and there's an X to remove it. So now this is the key item that you'll want to make note of. When you delete a condition in the older version, as we showed, the flow was automatically redesigned to link everything back together for you with that condition not in place. In this version, you're going to have to make note and either remove AOIs or link them back to other conditions or other items as needed. Here's what happens. When you delete the condition, notice it only deleted the item that was highlighted with the condition, the yes and no branch. The items that were a result of the conditional request are still in place. If we go up to one, like C5 above it here, and it's going to tell you which items are going to be deleted. So when I click this X, can, C6 is still going to be there because it wasn't a selected item in the flow. So, that, so that's something that may take a little getting used to when you're working with conditions. But you just need to reconnect them back up or delete the, uh, delete the child items underneath the conditions as well when you're removing them. That may be a good item to do is to remove the child items prior to removing the conditions, kind of work from the bottom up 
as opposed to just removing the conditions and in the previous version that was automatically taken care of for you. And like I said, the zoom button is here. It comes in handy when you have uh, a large process and you want to zoom in on a specific part of it. But the condition work is the key, I think, in this in this new release, getting used to working with that as, as far as removing them. So now if we just wanted to add another condition back in here, it's very similar as we've done in the past. You just drop that in and then you can connect them up as needed and continue on with the flow. If we were going to connect this one down here to that item, and then we're going to bring this one back over to here, we can just rebuild the flow and you know continue on to, to complete the flow. So hopefully this helps give an idea of some of the differences between the PDT and process view with the flash replacement. So we have troubleshooting guides available for you on our documentation website. And these links will be made available to you after the presentation when it's online. We have guides available for AR Server, CMDB, all the ITSM applications, SRM, as well as DWP and Smart IT. And as I mentioned, those are available on the support website where the documentation is, is listed. Okay, so one common issue you may run into after you've done the upgrade is the SRM module may not render properly after the upgrade's been done. There are some CCS settings available that are detailed here that need to be updated to get the rendering done properly. Okay, so here are some references that are available. Uh, we've got knowledge articles that were created specifically for this. The numbers are listed there. The links will be available as well. We've got the product announcement. We've got a CMDB blog, as well as our Amigo program if you need help on upgrading your entire platform or any part of it to 2002. And we also have a link here to the announcement from Adobe about Flash being removed. Okay, to summarize what we've covered, we recommend upgrading the entire platform to 20201, even though for some of the applications it's not required, that's going to be the BMC recommendation. So we're giving you time to plan ahead because this is going to take place at the end of the year when Flash is going to be deprecated. So use the Amigo program if you need help in your upgrading planning. And we've got a patch one release documentation available for awareness on our website. We also have troubleshooting guides and knowledge articles out there as well to assist you in this process. Back over to you, Greg. Thank you, Jeff. And now I'll take us through the self-help and contacting BMC. The YouTube channel where this webinar will be posted is available at this link. It contains this webinar as well as past webinars and a rich set of how-to videos. Also, the Connect with BMC Helix ITSM and Remedy webinar schedule. This is where the schedule for the webinar series is for future as well as past webinars. And the hot off the press newsletter that contains trending information regarding the Remedy solution. And for contacting BMC technical support via web, phone, email, as well as these social channels is available. Want to thank you for joining today.